Now, it seems like some time since we talked about functions, uh, in particular, the how to create them. So we're going to dive into a quick tutorial on how to create PowerShell functions, and we're going to use Visual Studio Code, um, simply because it's my preferred editor at this moment. Now, by simply entering function, Visual Studio Code knew that we were going to create a function and kind of starts to pre-fill some of the parts of that, one of them being it's suggested the parameter and it's already put the various uh, rows like function name and uh, parameters into place with all the curly brackets. So I can just simply go ahead and in this case start generating the parameters. So I'm going to have a number parameter so I'm going to give it an int value. So for those of you who don't know, ints are usually number based. I'm also going to create an array value so in this case the array means that I can have multiple values under that particular type not just a single value and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a string one now with the string one I'm going to be a little bit more detailed because what I want to do is go ahead and give this parameter uh, some attributes so in this case I'm going to give the parameter the attribute that it's mandatory and so I'm going to set mandatory equals true in order to make sure that it has to be filled. I'm also going to make the parameter type in this case a string. So I'm going to make sure that this string value is always filled in. Now you don't need to do this for every um, parameter that you create. They don't always need to be mandatory. They don't always need to be arrays or ints. So it really depends on what you're building. In this case, I want to give you at least a half dozen examples, and there are a few more that I haven't touched on at all here. So I'm also going to take the number and I'm going to add a single digit increment to it, just to prove that it's not just returning the values that we put in, but also um, the value that is being incremented by running this uh, function. So next up we're going to create a hash table and in that hash table we're going to put uh, basically everything that we want to be returned to the command prompt or depending on how you do it into a, another variable but that's a different topic. So for the moment let's just return some values. So in this case we take the info and our info is going to be our hash table and the hash table is going to contain the number but the number will be the incremented number since it's several lines above. So as an example, if we entered 12, then we're going to get 13. If we entered uh, 21, then we're going to get 22, and so on and so forth. We're also going to return our array value, and we're going to return our string value. Now, nothing special about those per se, and we need to put in a return, and then we're going to put the hash table as the returned value. Um, I'm also going to put a static value in here to prove that um, each time it runs you can also have hard-coded values. So in this case we're going to put the static value, something that is always going to return the same irrespective of what is entered in the command line. So you can have lots of different types of data and if we had a few more statements in here like ifs and ors we could do a lot more. So we've gone ahead and now run F5 to make sure that that uh, function is now loaded into the command prompt. So I can now uh, run the function in, by name, so in this case the set example, I'm going to give the number 12, I'm going to give the array a couple of values, nothing complicated, simple ones. Um, I'm going to put some value in for the string, and keep in mind again the string is always whatever we've defined and this is the only mandatory field so I could actually skip those and it would still run just there would be no information for them so as you can see R12 has turned into 13 the array has returned and a lot of the other values are as expected and the, even the hard-coded value is there so these are examples of how a function can work but we can also use functions in different ways but this is just one simple example and gives you a few basic inputs as to how it could be created. Functions can obviously go on and do many things and be pipelined from one to another so that you can actually daisy chain the functions to create much more powerful commands overall. Now that's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more content.